We connect the machine to 220 volts, either to the electricity mains or to a generating set of 10 kVA's. We connect the electrode holder to the positive pole and the earth clamp to the negative. We will check the data of the base material. Accordingly, we will select the electrodes making sure that they are perfectly dry using a drying oven or a stove. We will place the mode selector onto the welding position. We adjust the welding intensity to the electrode diameter. For example, 140 amps in 325 mil. For our 2.5 mil electrode, we will use 90 amps. We will use the data provided by the manufacturer on the electrode box as a reference. We carry out a welding test on a piece of metal to make sure the equipment works perfectly and we will proceed to set up the welding parameters if necessary. We must keep the arc length constant, remembering to vary the position of the electrode according to the position of the pipe and also on its consumption. It's advisable to maintain the same arc length to avoid unequal penetrations. The movement speeds will adapt to the material, thickness and intensity selected so that the arc is slightly ahead of the molten pole, preventing the molten pole from falling due to the gravity effect. If the speed is excessive, this can cause bites, slack inclusion and porosity. On the contrary, if it is lower, there is a greater risk of penetration and hanging drips. It's very important to distinguish between molten pole and slack, preventing the slack from overtaking the molten pole. To interrupt the electric arch, it's advisable to incline the electrode in the opposite direction to the displacement to fill up the bits and crater and prevent cavities and micro cracks. Once the bits finished, the slack must be chipped away by brushing the entire bit, making sure that it's clean.